today we're going to finish up our last little bit of chapter 19 and then we still have some activities and a video to watch so we're not quite at the end of the chapter but this is the end of the new material today we're going to read about earthquake forecasting so we are focused on page 549 through page 551 earthquake forecasting to minimize the damage and deaths caused by earthquakes seismologists are searching for ways to forecast these events there is currently no completely reliable way to forecast the exact time and location of the next earthquake. Instead, earthquake forecasting is based on calculating the probability of an earthquake. The probability of an earthquake's occurrence is based on two factors, the history of earthquakes in an area and the rate at which strain builds up in the rocks. Seismic risk. Recall that most earthquakes occur in long, narrow bands called seismic belts. The probability of future earthquakes is much greater in these belts than elsewhere on Earth. The pattern of earthquakes in the past is usually a reliable indicator of future earthquakes in a given area. Seismometers and sedimentary rocks can be used to determine the frequency of large earthquakes. The history of an area's seismic activity can be used to generate seismic risk maps. A seismic risk map of the United States is shown in figure 1925. In addition to Alaska, Hawaii, and some western states, there are several regions of relatively high seismic risk in the central and eastern United States. These regions have experienced some of the most intense earthquakes in the past and probably will experience significant seismic activity in the future. So if you look at this map up here, you're going to need this map to complete your seismic risk worksheet because the worksheet is in black and white and it should be a color-coded map. So you'll have to look on this map here to find the answers to that worksheet. But it's interesting to point out here is the highest risk area in Alaska, Hawaii, right there, right along the San Andreas Fault, of course, and California. And then there's also this fault here in Southern Illinois. It's called the New Madrid Fault. And this is the fault that was responsible for probably the most major earthquake Illinois has ever had. And we're going to watch a video on that next week. Recurrence rates. Earthquake recurrence rates along a fault can indicate whether the fault ruptures at regular intervals to generate similar earthquakes. The earthquake recurrence rate along a section of the San Andreas Fault at Parkfield, California, for example, shows that a sequence of earthquakes of approximately magnitude 6 shook the area about every 22 years from 1857 until 1966. In 1987, seismologists forecasted a 90% probability that a major earthquake would rock the area within the next few decades. Several kinds of instruments, including the drill shown in figure 1926, were installed around Parkfield in an attempt to measure the earthquake as it occurred. In September 2004, a magnitude 6 earthquake struck. Extensive data was collected before and after the 2004 earthquake. The information obtained will be invaluable for predicting and preparing for future recurrent earthquakes around the world. We actually watched uh, a video that included that right before uh, the shutdown began where they talked about putting all those instruments up in Parkfield and then they drilled into the core of the San Andreas Fault. So if you remember that part of the video, that's what this is talking about here. Seismic gaps. Probability forecasts are also based on the location of seismic gaps. Seismic gaps are sections located along faults that are known to be active, but which have not experienced a significant earthquake for a long period of time. A seismic gap in the San Andreas Fault cuts through San Francisco. This section of the fault has not ruptured since the devastating earthquake that struck the city in 1906. Because of this inactivity, seismologists currently forecast that there is a 67% probability that the San Francisco area will experience a magnitude 7 or higher earthquake within the next 30 years. Figure 1927 shows the seismic gap map for a fault that passes through an area of Turkey. Like the San Andreas Fault in California, there is a long history of earthquakes along the major fault shown below. Stress accumulation. 
The rate at which stress builds up in rocks is another factor seismologists use to determine the earthquake probability along a section of a fault. Eventually, this stress is released, generating an earthquake. Scientists use satellite-based technology, such as GPS, to measure the stress that accumulates along a fault. The stress accumulated in a particular part of a fault, together with the amount of stress released during the last earthquake in a particular part of the fault, can be used to develop images like figure 1928. Another factor is how much time has passed since an earthquake has struck that section of the fault.